Hello, cake dwellers, and welcome to Retro Recipes. I'm so glad you joined me because today I've come up with a very cool, very fun idea for refurbishing and upgrading this. So stay tuned. Let's make beautiful music together. Well, it's a fun little package. Let me just mute it. So I fell in love recently. Not in that way, necessarily, but with this. This is the Akai MPK Mini Special Edition. Look at those keys. I was looking for a way to connect a MIDI keyboard to the Commodore 64 and play the SID chip live. The only problem was, as you can see, space is a little limited in my retro computing museum. So, where would I put it? Then I remembered I had this. Now, there is a version of this keyboard that uh, was branded by Sight and Sound, I think, but we want to stay as true to the original as possible and use the Commodore branded version. This was designed for the Commodore 64, and I have converted and upgraded my case to a Commodore 64C. So that meant that this wouldn't actually fit. Now, Commodore did release a version for the Commodore 64C, uh, but it's not that great looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm not entirely sure why they configured it that way, because I've studied this and I've realized that if I put an extra piece of plastic on the back of here will actually slot into the fins at the back of the Commodore 64 and that means I can use this. But it won't mean that it looks as sexy as that Akai unless I were to paint it red and black. But that's not all. What you can do is wire a potentiometer into a paddle or joystick cable and that gives you control of the filters, pitch bend of the SID chip. Now there are a lot of cool Commodore 64 refurbs out there where they've added potentiometers to the actual casing of the computer, even added a screen. That's great. Personally, I don't want to hack up the device. So then I thought, so then I thought, what if I added the potentiometers to this? Join me for this journey and let's make that music. I need to learn to rephrase that. Let's. Refurbish this. Hi! Well, I thought it'd be fun to just start off and have a quick look at what we get inside the box of this illustrious device. We get a piece of plastic. <laughs> it seemed to only come on tape. It's very hard for people to find these on disc. Ironic, really, that a program that lets you make music came on cassette, including the hit song, When I'm 64. I hope that they got permission. Welcome to Music Maker. In this, the first of an exciting series of music programs, you will be introduced to the fascinating world of music. Well, I already knew what music was, but... And then this is the Start Playing Keyboard. A melody played on the keyboard is a sequence of musical tones. This is actually pretty useful. You know, if you've never studied music, this is going to give you a good introduction into what it all means. Oh, what's this? Keyboard stickers? That's very nice that these have never been used. What is this? Don't miss out on your chance to be kept up to date on the most exciting development in computer software, the SFX program, double M-E. Yes. I'm guessing this person never found out about all of those exciting developments, but I'm gonna send mine away right now. Oh. Well, we'll put this to one side. So first up, these are the potentiometers. And a pretty simple thing, it just turns and sends a different variant of that current through to the pin. And uh, here's the wiring diagram that I'm gonna be using for these. This is hopefully a nine pin cable inside there and actually wire that into the side and that will then plug into the Commodore 64 joystick port. Uh, I'll be using a little grommet, won't be using Wallace on this occasion, just to go around that cable. Again on the Akai, around some of the buttons, 
Here is white pinstriping. So I've got this, it's 3M Scotch Cow striping tape. And then I thought, you know, we're gonna have power running through this cable, five volts. So on the way, I've got some blue LEDs. We'll need to probably reduce the voltage because they are 3.5 volt. So we've got some resistors ready. We can test out different brightnesses. This is a special all surface primer. And I'm assured that you don't actually need to sand down the surface. So we'll be trying that and the black. 15 minute fast dry. Any angle. The only thing really holding this in is these little notches. And they've had some glue on them at some point. And essentially this is just two pieces of injection molding. So I'm gonna start by using, this is called a screwdriver. And this is used, well, you probably know. So let me try and lever this out. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was easier than I anticipated. I don't wanna break it. Let's come straight out, okay. It's too easy. Something's bound to go wrong now. Look at that. Well, this one should come right off. Okay, broke it. Uh... Okay, well, we'll just soldier on. Let's see what we can do here. Okay. Now I said something would go wrong when it was looking too easy, didn't I? So I'm just gonna put these back in position and try not to glue my hands together or to my face. And I hope that when I lift my fingers off, I don't have a permanently attached Commodore Music Maker to my arms. Yeah. Put the lid on. That's not the lid. <laughs> this would make a good potentiometer, actually. Hmm. So I'm going to trim off his legs here. And all we need to do is compare the size of the holes. And I want to drill from this side through, so that way we don't have any ridge. Now a useful tip if you are going to drill and you don't want the drill bits sliding all over, you can use uh, any, any kind of sharp point and just make a little starter. Just push firmly. So then you have a nice notch for the uh, tip of the drill bit to rest in. Nice and easy number one, drill mode. And just go really slow, okay? I'm telling you, but actually I'm telling myself. Okay, there's some 1982 Commodore plastic. Put that on eBay. Same again. I like the way that spirals. Maybe I'll just leave it like that as a feature. There we go. Clean that up. Okay, so this should just drop in. Oh, that's actually nice and firm. That's gonna push in beautifully. Yeah, perfect. So that's what's gonna come through. Nice and straight, and eventually, a potentiometer knob. There you go, a little taster of things to come. Leave that off. Push that out. Rawr. Out it goes. Let's get this cleaned up and ready for painting. So when we spray, it's going to be hard to get in between the lines there, and then I'm going to separate out every other key. Now 
Now, of course, the fun bit of this project is that the black keys are going to be red and the other keys are going to be black. Ah, well, I throw in the towel. I think we've done all we can. Next stop, put out some paper, start spraying this mother, I mean, makeup, music. It says shake for one minute. It's kind of like a shake weight. Well, I'm gonna let the primer dry for 30 minutes, but it kind of looks pretty good like this. Interesting. What do you think? You're yawning. Okay, not much. And then for me, perhaps one of the most interesting parts of this project is painting these black keys red. Okay, well we are getting a sense of how it's gonna look now. I think I just need one more coat on a couple of pieces. And uh, while we wait for all that to dry a little more, I'm gonna go and have a look at the wiring of the potentiometers. So basically we have to identify the wires in this plug so as you can see in the diagram, the ones we have to hook up are POT1, POT2, and the plus five volts DC. So POT1 and POT2, excuse my very well painted fingers, uh, battle scars we can call them. POT1 and POT2 are here, and plus five volts is just a second from the end of there. And we'll start off around here. Okay, get rid of the mail. Oh, this is indeed nine cables inside there. One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight, nine. So that's gonna give us what we need. Let's get stripping. Why is there a string there? Never understood that. Now, before I forget, I'm gonna get a grommet on that cable. So, next up, we get our multimeter. Put it in continuity mode. So five volts should be this pin. So, touch our multimeter pin. And then pin five should be pot one. First time lucky. Now this is where being colorblind again is an issue. Uh, I mean, to me that's pink, so I'm gonna say pink. What's happened? It's a peculiar pen. Um, hello? <laughs> uh, they don't make them like they used to, do they, Commodore? And that just leaves pot two. This color, which I call Yellow. That's not, no use. Uh, in my next video, I'll be fixing this pen. Looking at things from this angle, our five volt line is third or the first pin. Hey Google, start the house fan. Here comes your biggest fan. These will come in handy. And pot one pink is going to be on the left. So that one we're going to wire in like this.
Next we do the same thing with pot 2, which is yellow. And we can do our 5 volts at the same time. Hey Google, start the house fan. Here comes your biggest fan. Now what remains is to bridge our five volt line. Tiny little bit of stripping. Just reflow the solder here. Now we know it's safe to plug into the Commodore. Let's go try it out. So up on the screen, I'm using a program called SynthCart and it also supports, more importantly, the Commodore Music Maker. As you can see, I am a songwriter. <laughs> oh, so good. Next stop, stick it in the thing when the paint's dry. The doctor will see you now, because it's pretty clingy. <sighs> it's nice. It's usually hard to find the end of a roll of sticky tape, <laughs> let alone when you've painted over it. There we go. The finishing touch. There it is, the Commodore Music Maker 2 Red Edition Paddle Plug. Hmm. Okay, so things have had a couple of hours just to touch dry, and I think you'll agree, this is looking rather snazzy. We don't want to go too many coats because it would start to drip a little, but these are very nice and glossy red, aren't they? That is cool. It's definitely going to be groovy. Well, I think that's all I can do for now. I'm going to go away, spray these, let everything dry overnight. And I invite you to join me for part two, when we're going to put the LED in, we're going to get these hooked up, wire the LED through, and actually start playing some real good music with our filters opening and closing. I hope that you open and don't close my next video. So I'll see you for part two when we refurbish this. As always, please subscribe, share, and support this channel if you can. And I'll see you next time. Cheerio.